find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show episode 117, and we got a great one going on. Hey, you know, it's Ladies' Day, Wrestling Mayhem Show, awesome cast all day on Podcast Day, and we're talking to another awesome one today from Meadville, PA, Deanna Pra. Damn it, Deanna. No, you got it right. Perrazzo? Perrazzo? Deanna Perrazzo. Okay. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show 117, and uh, you know, it's been Ladies Day uh, here in Wrestling Mayhem Show and Awesome Cast Land for Podcast Day this week, and uh, we're capping it off. We had an interview with Deanna Perrazzo uh, from Meadville, PA, uh, for uh, for Night of the Superstars 5, as well as BC Steel, coming up on the show, thanks to our friend Matt Carlins for those, uh, but first of all, hey, I'm Sorgatron, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area on the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Indie wrestling.us and with me on the line is my man in the south san antonio texas that's not right san antonio texas amen peyton <laughs> amen too please on the twitters i i hit the i hit the couch button instead of your face oh well that's okay that's fine <laughs> you don't need to see my face there you go <laughs> but yeah so i'm excited to be back so excited to talk about the world of indie wrestling as always Yes, and uh, you can check out this all and everything else over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and other shows. We're talking about Raw. We're talking about Impact Wrestling. We're talking about Lucha Underground. And hey, maybe if you if you let us know you want ladies on a consistent podcast every week, we're going to try to make that happen because we had a lot of fun tonight and kind of making us think that maybe that'd be something that we could do around here. Um, please also uh, uh, say you can drop us a line and let us know at Mayhem Show on Twitter or 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Any of those ways that you want to contact us. Uh, and of course, check out the Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's for the main show solely, but all that money cycles through to everything around wrestling mayhem shows network as well uh so with that amen i'm excited like i mentioned we got a great interview here with uh somebody that's popped up on nxt and uh, all over the indies and she's coming back iwc reloaded 2.0 in a couple weeks here in the pittsburgh area um and uh, i know this is somebody that's probably on your radar as well right uh definitely and on a lot of people's radar uh, somebody who's getting around a great deal uh whether it's in uh NXT, Ring of Honor, uh, she did the recent TNA uh, Knockouts pay-per-view. Uh, yeah, Deanna Perrazzo uh, seemed to be getting out everywhere, which is always good to see with any uh, independent wrestler. Without further ado, let's head it up to Meadville, and we'll be right back. All right, we're with Deanna Perrazzo here in Meadville for Nine of the Superstars for International Wrestling Cartel. Deanna, I've been writing a, um, a column on independent professional wrestling. Your name is always coming up. You've <laughs> got to be one of the busiest women on the entire nation right now. What's going on here? Um, I kind of blew up this last year. Uh, it's funny, um, I rode here with Robbie E, and he trained me from one of my first days starting, so he was um, comparing like the first teenage review I did, and I was just, I did knockouts in knockdown 2016, and he pulled up the picture side by side, and he was like, look how much you, you were like a kid then, and now you're like an actual adult. <laughs> so this last year has just been crazy. It's um, I, I like to say every time I step in the ring, it's my dream come true. This is all I've ever wanted to do. So I'm, I'm so happy and so fortunate to be able to be as busy as I am. Uh, one of the things that's kept you busy, you've been doing some work with NXT. You've uh, yes. had a couple um, matches with Asuka. I have to ask you what that's like for you. The first time, I had no idea who my opponent was. So I just was in at full sale, and it was like, hey, this is what you're going to do. So no prep, but I, I'm up for anything. I, um, it's always been a dream of mine to go to Japan. So to work with someone who is from Japan in the States is amazing. Um, the second time around, it kind of was like redemption, you know? And uh, I felt a little bit short, but just to be in that ring and feel that energy at the, at the stadium is just incredible. Um, we ask everyone this question when they come on the show. What's your earliest memory of watching professional wrestling? Um, don't quote me, but I saw Stone Cold hit, maybe it was Jericho, with a chair. He hit someone smack over the head, and I was like, <gasps> like, who let someone do that to them? What is this? But it, I was hooked right from there. So that is like the first time that I was like, I need to know what's going on here. <laughs> um, another thing we ask people, um, kind of, 
What do you think is the best thing about independent wrestling? What do you think is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Uh, the best thing is that so many independent wrestlers dream of this. Um, I know since I was nine, since I saw that chair shot, was this is all I've ever wanted to do uh, again. So the best thing is, is that I get to live out my dream every weekend. I have a real job. I'm a preschool teacher. So I live out that dream Monday through Friday. And then Friday night, so I'm like, I get to suit up. And I spend all day saying, like, keep your hands to yourself. And then I get to go beat someone up. So it's really cool in that aspect. I think the worst part is a lot of people, um, anyone can do it. So even if, and there's, and more than that, there's so many schools that aren't training the right way. And I've been fortunate enough to train with Damien Adams and Robbie E and people like Rip Rogers at OVW, um, where I've learned so much so fast and I, I do it the right way, or I try to. Um, where there's so many people who just put out, oh, I know what I'm talking about, and then you meet them and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> so I think it, it's hard to find a credible school and find people who really care for you. I've got to say, Rip Rogers' Twitter account is one of the most interesting things that oh, I've yeah. ever found. And you're clearly a, a devotee of uh, what, he's, what he's putting out there. What do you think is the big message he's trying to get out to everybody? Because it's, it's an interesting window into kind of what, um, what the teachers are trying to instill on the students, what the good teachers are trying to put into this. Yeah, for Rip, um, he just tries to teach old school. He tries to teach people the way that he was taught. He tries to um, reinstill that in people. And with me, I wholeheartedly believe and apply everything that he teaches at OBW. And um, Damien trained there for three years um, while it was developmental. So everything we take to our school is everything that Rip does there. Um, and he just wants everyone to be the best that they can be. He is so aggressive and so rude and um, vulgar, but <laughs> it, he means it from his heart. Um, people want to keep up with what you're doing. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of you're doing Global yes. Force, doing TNA. <laughs> um, let people know how they can uh, keep up with uh, what you're doing online and whatnot. Yeah, everyone can follow me at, um, on Twitter at Deanna Perrazzo. I have a Facebook and an Instagram, all at Deanna Perrazzo. But Twitter is probably the best way to get in contact with me. Well, it's great to run into you. Good luck. Thanks for coming to me, Phil. Thank you so much. Good luck. Uh, conspicuous by his absence is sore because I'm taking over. Wrestling Mayhem Show, I'm going to do that. A podcast about podcasts, I'm going to do that. It's going to be me. You're going to see this face. Sorry, this is what I was born with. You're going to see this face everywhere. Forget Sorg. Nobody likes him anyway. It's not him. Don't worry about it. WMS is going to be BCS. He's horrible. Nobody... Hey, buddy, I was just telling the people how I love your stuff and how I loved, we were talking earlier, you filmed the baristas. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah the baristas. Yeah. 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 You guys should check that out. And it's still she, on there on the YouTube. Did she, just, did she just pan down on us? I don't, I don't what, think so. What kind of show, what kind of show don't, do you run? my wife. Wait, uh, have you seen the 100th anniversary show? No, that's, for that's, that's, that's a good point. So, that's a good point. So, so who, who are you? Uh, my name is Benjamin C. Steele. The C go. stands for a lot of things. There it does. It does. That's why I have it on my hand. And I, I would put on my shirt, but I'm a big fan of rap music. Uh, mm. NWA, Eazy E, mm. Ice Cube, as you can tell, I'm their demographic. Mm -hmm. uh, Bone Thugs. Yeah, I love your stuff. I love what you do. I was just telling the people how I love your stuff. And I also want to point out that I had to follow RJ City with that masterpiece, which I'm sure <laughs> and we'll, we'll cut that up and stuff. Well, us, because, you know, we I'm hang sure. out and I cut I'm up sure. your sure. audio and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I had to follow that, so that was kind of embarrassing. Um, all right. Well, we can we can make this up. Can I actually interview with this one? Oh, oh, this oh, shoot! That's that's, that's what you do. I don't know if this is the trend or, or, yeah, or not. Go. So we're here, you know. Uh, so so you've been uh, you've been you've been around the Pittsburgh area. I just yes. said. I've seen you around. I've seen you around. I've been around other places. You're you're finally here in IWC. How's it feel being in IWC, man? It's interesting being back. I was here in uh, 2001. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna name drop. Uh, Super See, I've only been around since like 2006, so that is news to me. Well, yeah, I roughed here in 2001, 2002. You know, CM Punk told me one time we go way back. He's like mm -hmm. Ben. No, we don't. But not Super Indie One guys like CM Punk, Cole Cabana, the, 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 the genesis of IWC. Somebody just bought like the first like five Super Indies on DVD, and they're gonna like, be seriously Super Indie Ooh. One too. One, or, two, like four and five. We usually have three at the show, so well, you're gonna see Super Indie One. You're gonna see me. I have a haircut where I part it down the middle and it shoots off to the side. It looks like an L. Okay. I look like a douchebag. I didn't get laid then. That's a that's available at IWCWrestling.com, by the yeah. way. But I'm excited to be in IWC. There's a lot of great things. Obviously, I'm here, so it goes from like here to here, which is kind of impressive. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely happy. This is actually the only place I've never managed. I've ring announced or managed just about everywhere except here. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's kind of exciting, and I feel like I offer a, uh, what's the word, uh, excellence to IWC. Okay, so, uh, okay. So yeah, I bring yeah. out what nobody uh, else Of course, you teamed up with Chris yeah. LaRusso. He's been on the show, uh, several versions of the show several times and everything. Um, what's it like to kind of bring him out and, and, and kind of exposing him to the IWC audience as well? 
Well, the nice thing about Chris Marouche is he's been in Ring of Honor. He's been all through the Pittsburgh area. Oh, yeah. So, and the IWC was the one place that he had never been. So it was kind of a unique pairing. We didn't plan it. It wasn't some, you know, organized plan where, wow, we're going to come in together. It's kind of, he was here, he was here, and we kind of met in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because we do have that familiarity. Mm -hmm. And there's people talking off camera now, and I would go kick their ass, but... But, but they uh, happen to be Scott Hall and Sean Benjamin, so I probably wouldn't do that. No, probably no, not. They no. would kill me. Yeah, they would kill me. Yeah, they, the they bad would guy's on his way down so, here. And I, have, I don't have my glasses on. I don't, well, I don't have my glasses on. Right I'm pretty sure he's the bad guy and he's staring you down. So we're just kind of running all over here. So no. But anyways. We'll edit that out. Can we edit that? Can we edit that? Can we edit Can you make me pretty muscular on here, too? Uh, no. Definition. I, I mean, like, not great. Like, like, no. Like, could you make... I... I know people. Do you have to edit that? We out? don't have the budget for that. Oh. Cool. No, we can do that. Because again, have you seen the hundred show with STDs? <laughs> Where are you going? Well, Where are you going? I have seen. Oh. I have seen STDs. What were we talking about? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and I have seen. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool to have Chris here. Chris is, in my opinion, obviously I do manage him, but he's yeah. one of the best in Pittsburgh. I feel that I'm one of the best in Pittsburgh, obviously. So it's it's a nice uh, nice match here in IWC. All right, so um, one of our finisher questions, again, we've talked to Falk about this before, uh, but uh, you've been around. Holy crap, I didn't realize how long you've been around. Yes. Uh, uh, so you probably have one of my stories, so we got to get you on the show for, on a full show. Um, what is uh, the best and the worst thing about working indie wrestling all these years? Uh, the best thing about doing it all these years is sometimes the fact that I've done it all these years. So when I reference people that perhaps from like 10, 15 years ago. Like CM Punk. Well, and if I think people know him. You know, he did go on. He did have a little bit of success. I understand so, yeah. Yeah, he, he made a couple dollars. I don't I don't know what he's doing now, but I, I, there's so many guys that I reference now and sometimes people are like, who? And I feel like I'm the old guy in the room. Mm -hmm. And I'm only 32. I know. This mm -hmm. doesn't look there, too. Uh, the best thing I would say, especially now that I'm in IWC, is I'm always meeting different people. So I, I try and take stuff that I see and stuff that I learn and kind of mold what I do. And I think I'm different here anywhere than I've ever been. So those would probably be the two best and worst things. And the absolute best thing is meeting Sorg on the Wrestling Mayhem show. I'm getting paid for this, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the other best part about indie wrestling, the money. There you go. Oh, there you go. Uh, where can people find you online? Uh, people can find me at bcsteel.com, which has not been updated in quite a long time. They can also find me at... Is it still a GeoCities page? Is it that long? So no. you've been around since it, well, GeoCities. Uh, you can check me out on Tripod and AOL oh, Hometown. Oh, Angel uh, Fire. We, I just got uh, away messages now. I don't know if you knew about that. Oh. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, you can check out my MySpace okay. page. No, in all seriousness... You can also check me out on Twitter and Facebook at 1SF Podcast. And you know a lot about podcasting. I understand. One day I do hope to be as excellent as you are at podcasting. I do watch a lot of your stuff, so I kind of creep. Yeah, that's where they can reach me. And the uh, best place to reach me, right here at an IWC show. There you go. Go stock them in IWC. Thanks a lot. <laughs>
um, brought up from from the vibes from indie wrestling. We've seen intergender. We've seen a lot of stuff there. We've talked about that for years over the Wrestling Mayhem show shows, right? So, so Eamon, and I know you're probably you're probably in, involved in this a lot, especially with Empire, Inspire Pro. Um, what is the state of women's wrestling? Are we still kind of in that really cool intergender? A lot of stuff's happening. Place has it grown? Has it has anything happened? I mean, what what are you seeing out there? Um, I think it has grown. I, I I don't know. I always look back to, you know, 10 years ago from now or even 20 years ago uh, and, and just to look at the state of women in professional wrestling and what not necessarily they were capable of, so to speak, but what they were given in a sense. Um, and that there's a, I, I think when people say that, that they think traditionally like, oh, well, WWE and their divas and, and, and model types being put into wrestling roles. But I think it also was seen on an independent level. Like on the indies, usually if you go to an indie wrestling show, there's a women's match on the show and it doesn't have a storyline. It's just two women that, you know, they found, you know, to have a special attraction, you know, women's match because, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's like they, how they would phrase it. It's considered a special attraction. It's considered, you know, separate from what is actually happening on the show. And now you have women's wrestling feuds developing. You have um, uh, companies, uh, uh, you know, formed specifically for women. You have your shimmers and your shines that have been going for a great deal of time now. And even more popping up like a uh, women's wrestling revolution, which is the offshoot from Beyond Wrestling uh, for their women. Um, uh, and you have intergender and you have people uh, willing to work men and doing storylines and, and, and winning championships with men. Uh, that, that are traditionally held by men. Uh, you know, the stuff in Jakara right now is amazing. With, right. uh, uh, Princess Kimberly and, and her reign so far as champion has been, I think, really, really well done. Um, uh, really enjoying, like, the kind of stuff that ha- they've been exhibited, that indie wrestling, I should say, has been exhibiting throughout, you know, uh, th- this coming year. And I do think it's, it's bleeding over in parts to what we see on TV. I don't know if intergender is all that way there uh i obviously i don't know if i necessarily consider them indie but i think lucha underground is another one that's really kind of pushing that whole women are as much characters on the show as anyone else and are really going with that and running with it and for the most part it's being widely accepted by their audience which i think is great yeah and 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 you're starting to see it creep in. I, I know RWA's had it for a while. IWC, uh, you know, with you know friends of the show like Britt Baker and them and Raylan, uh, really kind of putting, you know, making a reason for them to have a women's division, right? And then even on the side of indie running indie wrestling us, we do digital downloads and everything, and and consistently the highest the highest selling the 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 titles that i see going most of the time are the vow queen of the rings and matches from rwa and iwc involving the women wrestlers right um people are looking for this people are seeking this out in comparison maybe because it is something different than just a couple dudes having a wrestling match right and and, and we're talking about like a a site where we do have like aj style cm punk stuff right um and, and, and and virgil or whatever right uh and and they're building a division we did have in Clearfield. I was worried that we'd have like, well, Raylan and Britt Baker are like the women's division and they just build everything around them, right? But then in Clearfield, we did get two different names. Samantha Heights, who's been around a bit, um, uh, you know, and, and um, like, I think Rudy Moore was the other one. And uh, so there does feel like a division. Yeah, it was kind of a toss out match, but it's kind of a toss out show you know, uh, uh, right, up yeah, there yeah. Uh, two and a half hours away from Pittsburgh where, where they usually have shows. Um, so I think, I think, uh, you know, promotions like IWC are seeing the importance and say, well, we got to have a part of this. Right. And, and, and I think even more and and I'm wondering if they may have discussions about how far can we take the women's wrestling? What should be our part in that? Where do we take advantage of this movement that's happening right now in, 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 in all facets for these guys? I agree. And I think utilizing, those women as vital characters as much as the men, I think is the, the, I think the very crucial part of it all, you know, um, when women are able to blend in seamlessly with the rest of the show and they don't feel separate, uh, it's always a good thing. I feel. And it, 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 again, it's, I think you see it also as well in WWE, but like it, 
it appeals to an audience that a, a traditional indie wrestling show doesn't necessarily, you know, always garner towards. You know, you uh, uh, not to transition too much into uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, but uh, uh, we have a lot of young fans as well that also attend our shows, and we use a lot of young female fans as well as of late. And I like to think it's because of the stuff we're doing with our women and, and giving them matches where they're considered, you know, powerful and important entities and giving them something that they can look up to. Um, uh, I think that's really important I, uh, to, to expand your program or your product, I should say, uh, to garner as many possible audiences as you can uh, is extremely important and extremely mm-hmm. good business plan going forward. Even if you don't believe in, you know, even if you don't necessarily believe in what, women should be doing or whatever uh, in, a, in a wrestling scale, you can't deny the fact that there is an audience that these women appeal to. And that's really interesting because, uh, you know, we, we, like I said, we just got done talking about China and like, well, how influential was she to you girls, you know, watching wrestling growing up. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, when you have a Kimberly or a Britt Baker or a Raylan that can be that main stage influence for, for young girls, yeah. I, I think that's amazing, you know, and, and you see them. I mean, you see, I, I've seen plenty. I We were at um, the, the, the time that we went on our 10 year um, um, anniversary trip to Erie and we <laughs> ended up at a pro wrestling uh, revolution show uh because you know our good buddy john mcchesney was on the card and we ran to a mutual good buddy of ours up there and says yeah you know john's wrestling down here i'm like well okay what else are we gonna do there was a row of like like three or four girls hanging out and i'm talking like 10 12 years old right like not the <laughs> like not the like age you expect to be into pro wrestling even ironically right um right. you know they're there the girls are there and we're transitioning in because of even the unlikeliest things like t- total divas and some <laughs> training because they were exposed to it that way right um yeah. I, I think that's awesome I, and this is a bigger level that 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 uh and you know a more varied level more chances you know uh, for for you know girls to get interested and say oh that's something I can do too or if yeah. they or even if they can do that I can do not even wrestling this thing over there right and I think that's yeah and not even in just also make them fans as well because it's important right. I think for a fan especially a fan that young to look at a wrestler and say oh that's somebody like me that's somebody you know that I can relate to uh, you know obviously with the amount of male wrestlers there are, there's a better chance for young boys out there to kind of see that and, and, and latch on to that. It's nice to have the same thing for females. It's nice to have a little girl look at a, um, at a, you know, Sasha Banks or Charlotte or Becky Lynch or, a, you know, Kimberly or, or, you know, various others and say, I can be, you know, that's me in the ring. That's, that's, you know, that's, you know, what I look like. That's, that's somebody that's representing me, you know? Exactly, exactly. Well, we talked about a little bit here. And again, let us know what you guys think about the state of women's wrestling. What are you guys watching? What's going on out there? Uh, let us know uh, at Mayhem Show on Twitter or uh, the stuff we uh, uh, Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com or the phone number as well. Uh, so uh, I had a well, actually leaning towards that. And you talked about it a little bit, too. You had Inspire Pro Wrestling this past weekend. We did. Yes, indeed. Uh, our Splendor in the Smash event uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, really, really fun show. Uh, speaking of the, on the women's wrestling front, I mean, uh, we got to main event with, uh, uh, well, obviously the main event that we had set was a tag team title match, with, uh, Davey Vega and Tim Storm against Tarao Tempo of the new movement and a mystery partner, that mystery partner being a returning Angelus Lane, a uh, friend of the show, uh, who's coming, who's come back from injury as of late. Uh, uh, and it's cool, like on that women's wrestling front, having somebody be that, that, focal point of a main event match and in my opinion getting the biggest pop of the night uh and and a lot of that having to do with the few that that had happened uh for most of last year between herself and another friend of the show delilah doom um and obviously that being rekindled a bit here at this event with uh, uh angela slain being brought into the uh stable <laughs> delilah doom's a part of and uh uh uh, Delilah do not being very happy about that. So we're going to have to see how that develops going forward. And to, on that front, like, I feel like that's been one of the most, like, that's just one of the storylines I think people have been most invested with in our company. Uh, and then that's extremely cool to see. Um, and it was, and it was extremely great to have Angela Slane back uh, on the Inspire Pro roster. Very, 
very happy to have her back in this show. But there's a lot of amazing stuff. We had an insane three-way ladder match that was ridiculous and is something people need to check out when it comes out on DVD very soon. Uh, a lot of really great matches from top to bottom. Uh, I also really want to thank our fan. So, so in the behind the scenes sort of style side of a wrestling show, uh, as we're one to talk about it here on the show, uh, it's, uh, you know, venue wise, sometimes we get problems occasionally on a new wrestling show. For example, this time around, uh, our AC system in the venue completely went out. Oh no. And it's April in Texas, which is fun. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, we were able to move in some fans and try to uh, 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 cool things down as much as we possibly could. Uh, uh, but I want to give a big thank you to all the fans that stuck around, uh, uh, pretty much everyone that stuck around and, and stuck through it. And we're still as loud, still cheered, and still uh, brought a great energy because uh, uh, it's amazing. It's a, it's a testament to our fan base, I feel. Because, uh, uh, yeah, it was pretty. it got pretty hot, hot in the building at one point in time. So... Um, uh, very happy to see that we were able to keep that crowd uh, uh, contained. Um, uh, so yeah, but you know, this case, like we talked about, you know, stuff happens in new wrestling shows, roll with the punches kind of thing. Um, yeah, it was a, a really fun show to just call and 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 uh, yeah, I, I I really think this was one of our most solid shows that we put on. Uh, uh, so many matches delivered uh, on so many uh, uh, variants. Uh, Again, going to the women's wrestling thing, I think one of my personal favorite matches was uh, uh, the XX Division Championship match that we had between uh, uh, Jessica James and Vanessa Craven, who came down from Canada. Uh, uh, many people were calling that the match of the night as well, like a really phenomenal contest. Uh, and I would agree because it was spectacular. Uh, uh, yeah, up and down, just a really, really fun show. And, and uh, very excited for what's going forward here at Spy Pro Wrestling. Uh, there's a lot of cool things in the works that hopefully we'll get to announce soon. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see uh, what, what's like going forward. So if you want to get more information on, on any of our upcoming shows that we'll be announcing soon, please visit inspireprowrestling.com. Uh, and yeah, the DVD should actually be out very soon, uh, thanks to another friend of the show, Ray Zombie, uh, who's been amazing at producing that stuff and getting that out very quickly. So uh uh, if you want to check that out, go check out smartmarketvideo.com or smvod.com when that comes out. Awesome. I, and like I said, I had a show this weekend as well, IWC's uh, Cage Combat 2 or Cage Combat in Clearfield or whatever you want to call it uh, up in Clearfield, PA. It was about two, two and a half hours away from the usual stomping grounds here in Pittsburgh uh, for these guys. Uh, and again, it's kind of a, uh, a, a smaller show, right? Uh, out, it's out there. It's, it's kind of, uh, the B show I've heard, uh, former promoter refer to as like pretty much their house show. Right. Um, and, and we had some good stuff. We had, uh, uh, uh Jimmy Vegas in a cage against Bolin. Um, it was a, you know, a lot of weapons, a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, we had a tag match between uh, the fraternity who I talked to last week. Uh, that will be, uh, I think we're going to put that on next week's episode, probably, Heyman, uh, unless you had somebody lined up. Um, and, uh, no, no, no. and we're, we're good. We're good. The IWC streak continues, <laughs> apparently. Uh, and we'll see what we do after that. I'm going to have to let you have a month for, 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 <laughs> for booking and see where we go with that. But uh, no, it was a really good show. It was a really fun show. Brutal Bob Evans from Ring of Honor was there. Uh, he was taking on uh, Dylan Bostic. Uh, really good match. It, this is one of those, like, you know, it, it's it's a smaller town. They they get wrestling, you know, much like Meadville. They get wrestling once, maybe twice a year. And, and it had been an entire over a year since we had been there last with the first cage combat in Clearfield. Um, and, and, and we'd be going to Clearfield. Like, like I was counting out, like we had like eight combat in Clearfields. So that was like two or three times a year. We had about four or five, uh, uh, Clearfield cataclysm. So we've been going for, I couldn't believe how long we've been going to Clearfield, uh, <laughs> for this. And I finally went to the big bit, the, the, the Denny's big, uh, beer and barrel pub where they have a, a, a 25 pound hamburger that you can get oh, nice. as an eating challenge. So <laughs> side note there, but, um, but no, it, it's always great to go up there already available on digital download over at indie wrestling.us. Um, and the last IWC show I'm going to see at least until July. Cause oh, wow. unfortunately scheduling and stuff, I'm not going to be able to make reloaded or super indie. And I'm very, very sad about that. I'll be post editing them. Don't get me wrong, but, um, but definitely uh, going to be a little, 
rough there. So uh, same with the ring of, uh, RWA. I, I'm not going to see an RWA until uh, I think I'm going to be back in June, actually. And currently editing this past month's RWA, actually. Just got into that today. Uh, so looking forward to seeing how that show turned out. Great match with Sanjay Dutt and um, uh, Brian Bowers, trainee of Lance Storm. He's been doing some great stuff around the area. Uh, so, so definitely look out for that from uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. So, I mean, that that's that's it there. I mean, I, I, as far as um, um, the weekend, how things go, uh, no, I think it was a great, nicely packaged, nicely flowed show. Um, they're doing a good job of, okay, this isn't our big show, but it feels significant, you know, as an indie show, or at least I walked in and just want to watch some wrestling. There's enough in there for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's, that's really cool. I think they found a nice vibe for these shows that care that do carry you on into the next two, you know, for people that maybe want to get the DVD or, or, or something. So, um, and, uh, it, and it has been pretty cool to see that and, and see where IWC is going with, with things this year. So, Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, well, from that, um, um, I, I know uh, Matt Collins has been uh, pulling things together with around the Indies. So if there's anything else wrestling related, uh, there's some visuals, some great photos from Dan Hooven from from uh, the IWC show, for instance. And 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 just I'm loving the names because I've been going through this because um, I, I, I go through and I try to do a little bit of promotion and let let some of the let, let some of the wrestlers or promotions and the contributors with some of these photos and trying to communicate with them over at Indie Wrestling uh, US is twitter and um there's one there's one that caught my eye just a name and i haven't been able to follow through wrestling is magic <laughs> and i love that concept and i think i actually it, it, it kind of left my lips a little bit on a wrestling mayhem show about things being magical um and and i think that's one of the really cool um, um, I think I even referred to it when we did a, a odd, uh, a side thing. We're talking about pro wrestling on fishing without bait, which is decidedly not a pro wrestling podcast. If you guys want to check that out, um, and see how we kind of work that in. But, uh, I, I, this, I, I just kind of wanted to speak a little bit as I did on there about like why we're into pro wrestling and Eamon, let me know if you're along this lines as I am. But, uh, I mean, I'm looking at this stuff and I'm looking at these pictures and, and just the idea of, you know, cause there was like, well, what is wrestling? And I was like, well, it's, it's a performance, it's athletic and it's like a stage show, but everybody's kind of in on it as if it's an athletic competition and supporting them. And, and it's, Hey, there's some inspired pro wrestling in this as well. Hey, look at that. Mm. Um, and, and, and it's just, um, Everything works together between the crowd and the people in the ring and the things that happen, and it's magical. Like it is magical to me. And um, absolutely. Oh, geez, some insane stuff happening there. Um, <laughs> I gotta get to Texas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, but uh, and that's what it is. And and when it's captured in a full package, as it seems like you guys are doing down there, um, I mean, it it is it, it, it there's no better way to describe it than just just magic when it all pulls together and it's really cool when you do get to experience something like that or what pulls together like i feel like i feel like the feeling when we all watched nakamura and Sami Zayn was magic yeah. like that crowd you know that response and everybody feeling that energy or a hundred thousand people at wrestlemania no matter what you thought of the show that is a cool thing and if you get to be in that as i know you did Eamon, uh -huh. yeah, with what something like eighty thousand in New Orleans, and myself with some seventy some thousand in MetLife Stadium, like that is magical, and and that's what we're here. That's why we're here, right? Absolutely, All I right. agree completely. All right. On that note, thank you, Eamon, talking a little wrestling with us. Thank you to our interviewees, Diona, Diana. Perazzo. I don't know why I'm having so many there's so many letters in that name, but th thank you so much and looking forward to seeing her in the future here with IWC and wherever else she's popping up which is seemingly everywhere uh, I'm glad yes. she took time to talk with our boy Matt Carlin's mainstream Matt on the Twitter 1T, talk with him about the wrestling he's a good one to talk to, talk to about wrestling and um, um, apparently his wife is just as opinionated as we as we found out on Wrestling Mayhem Show this week as well, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Eamon, at Eamon2 please on the Twitter, is anything else going on? Indie rest or I'm uh, sorry, just, Inspire Wrestling, Inspire Pro Wrestling. I was going to say, just follow, follow me on there and follow uh, Inspire Pro Res on Twitter. There you go. Thank you so much for everybody joining us. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to everything. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412, 4, I'm sorry, 207. Blah. 
412-206-WMS0 is a phone number. And, uh, and thank you, everybody, for supporting this show. Support the other shows. Support indie wrestling. We'll see you guys next time. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.